Star Wars Outlaws details just leaked and we seem to have a release date. Some people are pessimistic, but I'm not. Join me for why Star Wars Outlaws Big Leak has me excited. This is the medicine. Let's get into it. What's up, people? It's your boy MM2K of Geeks. Hard Knock Digital Culture, Cloud Dosage, and MM2K Gaming back again with another episode of The Medicine. Do us a huge favor before we get into this one, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when we're dropping these doses. And do us an extra, extra, do yourself a huge favor. When you rock those bells, make sure that it's not on personalized, it's on all. Personalized doesn't mean what you think it does. It puts the power in YouTube's hand to show you which videos we create you know, or not. And you don't want to give them that power because their algorithm is not the best. So put the power back in your hands. Make sure you select all. All right, with that said, let's get into today's video. Man, I am excited about this Star Wars um, Outlaws leak. And I know a lot of you are pessimistic about it for various reasons that I really can't knock you for. But let's get into the news. Let's talk about why I'm excited and let me address some of your pessimism and try to calm it down. All right. First and foremost, there was this tweet from Gamatsu. I hope I pronounced that right. And it says Star Wars Outlaws will launch on August 30th, leaked by Ubisoft Japan's YouTube premiere page uh, for the for today's story. And they give you a link to a trailer that has been taken down. So that's why I believe it's true. Um, the trailer will premiere in 3.5 hours uh, from the recording of this. So it's likely going to pop back up. But at the time of this recording, it was up for a moment and then taken down. News will be on the site with the trailer later today. Um, and then there's this story from Gamatsu. It says Star Wars Outlaw is an open world video game developed by Massive Entertainment and published by Ubisoft. Experienced the first ever open world Star Wars game set between the events of the Empire Strike Back and Return of the Jedi. Explore distinct planets across galaxy, both iconic and new. Risk it all as K Vess, a scoundrel seeking freedom and the means to start a new life along with her companion Nyx. Fight still and outwit your way through the galaxy's crime syndicate as you join the galaxy's most wanted. Um, key features are discover a galaxy of opportunity, explore distinct planets with bustling cities and cantinas before racing across sprawling outdoor landscapes on your spreader. Each planet brings new adventures, unique challenges, and enticing rewards if you're willing to take the risk. Experience an original scoundrel story. Um, live the high stakes life of an outlaw with Nyx by your side. Turn any situation to your advantage. Fight with your blaster, overcome with stealth and gadgets, or find the right moments to distract foes and gain the upper hand. Um, embark on high stake missions. Take on high stake uh, risk rewards uh, missions from the galaxy's crime syndicate. Steal valuable goods. Infiltrate secret locations and outwit enemies as one of the galaxy's most wanted. Every choice you make influences your ever-changing reputation. And jump into the policy, pilot your ship, the trailblazer, as you engage thrilling dogfights with the Empire and other foes, finding the right opportunities to chase, evade, and attack to get the upper hand. There's a lot more in that story. We'll leave a link to it. Definitely check it out to get more information. But here's why um, I'm excited about this. I, I truly don't think that a lot of you that are upset or pessimistic about this, um, know a lot of information about Massive and, and, and have the right perspective on this game. I love Massive, Th that's number one. That's why I'm, I'm excited about this game. A lot of you haven't played The Division, I get that. You've heard things about The Division. You may have seen things, you know, preliminarily about The Division and you came up to your own conclusions without actually playing the game. Um, yeah, Massive is known for the Division 1 and Division 2. Division 1 had a rocky launch. Division 2 had a decent launch month, and then it had a rocky period, and now it's better than ever. Um, but when you look beyond those taglines and those stories, you'll find that with the Division 1, they were taking on the daunting task of, of a games as a service, which nobody out of the gate gets it right um people i think with what developers have learned is that people will run through content that is there so you gotta have good pacing um hell divers too which is a 
excellent games as a service title i think they've learned from the pacing mistakes from the division and and destiny and stuff like that you know what i'm saying they've learned from those mistakes um you know but you got to break some eggs to make some omelets there's you know there's, there's some learning curves that you got to go through and it was the mistakes of the division um early on and other games that have led to games being better paced right now particularly the division two right now i was just talking to my brother about this because he was playing the division two and then he wants to get into another game and i told him is i'm um, you know a good game to complement the division two is hell divers two and i said look um i get it hell uh, hell divers is gonna be a fantastic experience for you but there is no game out here with more content and a better play loop in my opinion than the division two when it comes to games as a service i'm sorry it's just, there's just so much stuff in there so much continuous action and it doesn't feel repetitive um the grind is fun you get a lot of good loot and again massive has learned from their mistakes and they've made what i feel is like the ultimate games as a service title um so they're really good at what they do um visually the division two still stands up to games in 2024 you know what i'm saying still stands up looks great feels great plays great and then with this most recent update in, in 2024 um there's a lot of things the quality of life things that is just getting more people excited so with that said um i love massive uh, i love watching them grow as a developer i love watching where they're at right now and i have the utmost you know confidence in them um i like what they try to do with ubisoft games but uh, but recently they haven't landed well um i love what what massives can do um so that's why i'm very excited for this title another reason why i'm excited for this title is i finally get the space exploration fix that i needed that i kind of was looking for from starfield um you know without getting too much into the weeds with starfield uh i at the very least thought we were going to get some decent space exploration that didn't feel disjointed and that really you know added some some depth to you know space combat and all this stuff and i don't i didn't really get a feel from from of that from starfield i feel like many people feel the same way as i look at uh user reviews they all echo the same in sentiments and when i looked at star wars outlaws um during the the summer showcases and stuff like that like that was my that was my game of show um and i looked at that and i said man if starfield doesn't do what i needed to do as far as a space battle and a space exploration game um i'm going to probably get that fix it looks like from star wars uh outlaws um the thing about that is do i expect it to attempt to be as deep in like inventory and rpg likeness as as a bethesda game no not necessarily that's not what i need um but i need space good space travel space combat like this real sense of exploration that doesn't feel disjointed and from what i've seen in in previews i get a good sense of that from star wars outlaw so that's another reason why i'm ex excited for this game and, and this leak and this uh announcement that's forthcoming that being said I get the skepticism let's talk about it number one people don't trust ubisoft totally get it ubisoft has not landed with a lot of their content it's kind of fell flat they really tried to ride the games as a service gravy train and people just don't trust them anymore I, I, a lot of times i think it's over exaggerated people just don't want it they're the people they're the gamers that people love to knock and i, I see a lot of that unfortunately in the community they don't even try it um and, and they hate on it you know what i'm saying like I, far cry 6 isn't the best game but it isn't horrible but again it gets knocked because um it's a far cry game and it, it, it's it's a take of the previous far cry gameplay mechanics you know what i'm saying um so i, I get that i get that there's people feel like that it's time for ubisoft to bring something fresh and new to the forefront from a triple a standpoint they've been regurgitating the same old style of play and people want to see something different from them all right so i understand that but still um i think mass is massive is of a different animal that being said i get the skepticism about massive even though i had all those glowing things to say massive did just release avatar and even though avatar is not a bad game it's not a bad game it again follows the moniker of hey look 
This is the same old Ubisoft formula. It's either Assassin's Creed, it's either like a Ghost Recon slash Division third person over the shoulder, or it's like a Far Cry. And people want to see something outside of those pillars. And unfortunately, Avatar is Far Cry with an Avatar skin to it. It has some other mechanics to it, but it's a solid game. But again, people don't want to waste their time with uh, uh, um, an experience that they feel like they've played over and over again with just different skins on it. You know what I'm saying? Um, we just recently talked about Gear 6 and how Cold Blood and I are not that excited for Gear 6 because we haven't seen anything new from the gears franchise in a while it's just the same regurgitation with prettier graphics i can't knock gears for that and then let ubisoft pass for that as well um that being said i think they did that for avatar because that's what ubisoft presented to them to disney and the avatar people and they said well let's let massive work on this because massive is our most competent company let's let them do this and they done it and i think they did a good job with what they were what they were told to do okay but when you really let massive do its thing they're a lot more innovative as we're seeing in, in a lot of this output from star wars outlaws that being said let, let, let's tackle the 500 pound gorilla in the room and again, I don't like to get political here on this channel. When we do, we do let people talk. We don't just shun people away. As long as they're not just trying to be bigoted jerks or a-holes or whatever, we let people talk. And, 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 and our listening community has a variety of different opinions and views. And, and, and I foster discussion. That's fine. Um, and one of the things that I see constantly coming up when it comes to this game is the quote-unquote peggy sue syndrome what, what is it when we talk about the peggy sue syndrome well it, that's that's a moniker for this idea that there is a political agenda to put women in a the everyday women in a position of powerful superheroes or or protagonists or whatever um and you know people think that there's a, an agenda behind that right Here's my thoughts on that. I personally don't have an issue seeing a badass female character just kicking butt, right? Especially if, if it makes sense. And when I say it makes sense, I mean, I'm not sitting there saying, oh, she's only 165 pounds and there's no way that this can happen. This is stupid. And, you know, I, I don't care about that stuff. To me, I think that's overarching and, and digging deep into it. Let me give you a prime example. One of my favorite um, action movies is called Chocolate. Um, it is a Taiwanese or an Indian, I can't remember what it, it's an Asian um, karate film with um, an upcoming uh, um, Asian martial artist. Um, and she's like, she's like 25 pounds soaking wet, but she's flipping over guys that are like 300 pounds or whatever. But the way that the action cinema is, it looks good. It looks good and it looks exciting and it's all that. And, and there is no political agenda. There is no, you know, men suck and at everything and all that. It's just, it's just an action story that's being told. I don't dig that deep into oh this person is this small and look as much as i love bruce lee as much as i love jackie chan jackie chan isn't coming to america like he did in in uh bronx story i think it's called or what or rumbling rumbling bronx he's not coming to america and beating up 20 dozen 300 pound americans all at once it, it none of it is is reality jason statham isn't just throwing haymakers and beating up a field of 50 people okay none of it is realistic from that point of view as long as you have great choreography it looks great it looks fun you got a badass action story behind it and you got a badass character behind it I, i'm for it you know what i'm saying it's when you try to retrofit some type of character in there regardless of what the skin color is or the gender and you're trying to set up a political message and you don't have a good action story that's when i'm with you guys but I'm not with you guys simply because there's a female there. I love seeing badass female action heroes. And like I said, Chocolate is a martial arts movie that a lot of people have seen and have heard of. The same people 
that like chocolate and thought it was cool. Back then when chocolate came out, y'all weren't talking this Peggy Sue stuff. Y'all weren't trying to make every single female character that's in an action movie seem like a Peggy Sue. It is not until the advent of YouTube and someone indoctrinating you and saying, yeah, Peggy Sue, Peggy Sue, that now all of y'all want to regurgitate this all the time. Again, I'm with you when there's a clear agenda, you're, they're trying to retrofit somebody into a role that they're not good at, doesn't look or feel natural as far as like they're, they're, they can get into the character and good action character and there's not a good action output. I'm with you all there. I'm not with you guys on hating now all of a sudden on every single female <laughs> character that's in an action role. I, I, I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Um, look, if, if Harrison Ford at the age of 99 can still run around and play Indiana Jones and all this, like, come on, man. If we, if we can still be excited for him in uh, the last uh, trio of movies um, for Star Wars, even, you know, even though Harrison Ford is a thousand, if Liam Neeson, you know what I'm saying? Like if Liam Neeson at 350 years old, if we can still plausibly enjoy his action movies, all right, like the dude just takes down a, a glass of Geritol and beats up a whole train full of people. Like, come on! But it look, but but the way it's choreographed, the way it's produced, it looks good. Who cares? I don't get no. As long as Harrison Ford doesn't stop in the middle of the movie and say, "Look, if you like what I'm doing, this is why you need to stop doing whatever you're doing and send your money to AARP." <laughs> you know what I mean? As long as I'm not getting some political agenda about how, you know, we need to increase our deposits into social security, whatever. Let Liam Neeson's old ass kick butt all over the train. And like I said, when it comes to, when it comes to female characters in action roles, let's not get over consumed with people that are trying to fight political agendas one way or another. I don't want people just like squeezing a character in there and trying to give me a political lecture. I'm also not with people trying to make me hate on every single character that isn't a certain type that we, that they're used to seeing for the last 30 years and then tagging an, an incentive around it. I'm okay with this character. It looks like they fit. Hey, it's it's someone within the um the star wars world which is very exciting and very tantalizing to see i'm all for it man i'm excited to see it all right so there we go we got um we got massive who i'm i'm highly excited to have developed this game because they can be very innovative and, and great developers um we got a space exploration title which i feel like is going to fill the need created by the void of starfield and look, I'm for any character, whatever the aesthetic is. Okay, <laughs> I'm not I'm not hung up on aesthetics. I'm hung up on agendas. I don't care what the aesthetic is. I don't. I, I, I'm 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 cool with any character, any aesthetic, taking on a badass action role and it being cool as long as I don't get some type of political lecture because I, I just don't like that in games unless you letting us know up front that hey this is a political game with, with a serious political lean and this is what we're trying to do you know what i mean give me give me give me a pure blooded action game and it looks like this is what massive is trying to do so with that said that's why i'm excited about this game uh let me know in the comment section if you're excited about this game or if you're not also let me know what you think about what i had to say do you agree do you kind of like understand it? Do you see my point? Are you like, oh, you, you, you soft D, uh, Peggy Sue, Peggy Sue. <laughs> Let me know if you one of those folks. I, I don't care. Like I said, we foster discussion here. With that said, let, let, let me know. Appreciate all of y'all. Check out the links below to follow me. They'll lead you to geeks, hard knock digital culture, cloud dosage, and MM2K gaming. With that said, appreciate all of y'all. Y'all have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.